sorry, I understand you want to know why Ramadan is so special, but you said, is he another prophet? I didn't yes. hear you mention, who is another prophet? Ramadan. Ramadan is just uh, the name of the fasting month. This is where I got a little confused. But I can oh, okay. give you, uh, Ramadan is not a person. It's simply the mm -hmm. name of the month. And this is the month that Muhammad chose, designated to be the month of fasting. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Ramadan. Even oh, okay. before Muhammad, even before Muhammad claimed to be a prophet, the pagan Arabs in Mecca were observing the month of fasting in Ramadan. How do we know this? If you go to the Muslim sources, if you read um, uh, Sirat Rasulullah or even the Hadiths, Sahih Bukhari, it says that Muhammad went to the Hira Mountains, Hira Mountains in Arabia, during the month of Ramadan to fast and meditate. And it was in this month in the cave that supposedly Jibreel came with the verses of the Quran. So notice what this means. It means that even before Quran was revealed to him, when I say revealed, that's what Muslims believe. I don't believe it comes from God. It's not a revelation from God. We gave some reasons why we believe some of the revelations are just his own imagination. And Lord willing, in a few, few minutes, we will also look at some evidence to show that some of the revelations have a demonic source. But according to the sources, it was during the month of Ramadan when Muhammad was fasting this month that the Spirit came and told them, you are a messenger of God, and here are the first revelations of the Quran. It's chapter 96, Surah Al-Alaq. Uh, chapter 96, the first three verses, some may say the first five verses. So the question is, how is it that Muhammad was already observing the fasting month of Ramadan even before he became a prophet, even before he was given the Quran, even before he called people to Islam? Because this was a pagan fast. A fast observed by the pagans in worship of their false gods. Now the Muslims will tell you, well no, this month of Ramadan was instituted by Ishmael. They'll say Ismail, the son of Ibrahim, Abraham. Because according to their sources, supposedly Ishmael uh, settled in Mecca when God told Mo, um, uh, Abraham to drive out Hajar, Hagar, and her son Ishmael. Supposedly, they went to Mecca and settled there. And then Abraham went to visit his son Ishmael there, and both of them built the Kaaba. Number one, there is absolutely not a single shred of biblical evidence, evidence from the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament, that Ishmael ever settled in Mecca or that Abraham went there. Number two, there is no pre-Islamic evidence, and I'm challenging the Muslims who are listening, to call in, provide an accurate, authentic, historical source, a source that is before Islam that says that Abraham and Ishmael were in Mecca and they built the Kaaba. There's absolutely no evidence, pre-Islamic, archaeological, historical evidence, that Abraham and Ishmael ever settled in Mecca. In fact, all the evidence is against it. I'll give you just one example from the Bible that shows that Ishmael could not have settled in Mecca. If you go to Genesis 21.21, Genesis 21.21, it says that Hagar and Ishmael settled in the wilderness of Paran. Get a Bible map out, you'll notice that the wilderness of Paran is near Egypt and Israel, it's not in Saudi Arabia, it's not in Mecca. He settled in the wilderness of Paran. Secondly, Genesis 21, 21 says that his mother Hagar went to Egypt to get Ishmael a wife. So Ishmael married an Egyptian. And this is vitally important to note because Ishmael's father, Abraham, was a Hebrew and his mother Hagar was Egyptian and he married an Egyptian. According to the Hadith, if you go to Bukhari and Muslim, it says that Ishmael married not one, but two women in Mecca from the tribe of Jurhim, Jurhimites. So he married one woman from the tribe of Jurhim in Mecca, divorced her, and then remarried, found another woman from that tribe. As far as biblical history is concerned, would Jesus confirm, and the Quran says Jesus confirmed the Old Testament, Ishmael never married a woman from Jurhim, was never in Mecca, he was in the wilderness Paran, and he married an Egyptian, therefore, the history of the Quran, the history of Islam is wrong. That's another proof that the Quran cannot be from God. It contains too many mistakes. Thank you, Sam. And with that, we'll just go on to our next caller. Uh, Sister Nadine, you are on the air with us. Go ahead when you're ready. Yes, hi. Um, I just have a comment, like um, about the guy, a Muslim guy who was talking earlier. Um, please, for the people, the Muslims who want to talk, uh, if they, I, I feel like they just want to attack, okay, without uh, understanding what's going on. 
like uh, David was saying to him, please investigate exactly. Like they're wasting time, they're calling to attack. Just for the Muslim who wants to speak, please try to understand. If you are calling to understand what's going on, to learn about the truth, please call. But like calling just to say things that does not make any sense, like this person, he was arguing and arguing, and uh, uh, David tried to explain to him the truth, and he's coming from the other way to just... Sister, Sister Nadine, to Sister argue. Nadine, thank we, you. we thank you for your comment. ABN is very open to hear objections, though, and sometimes when somebody disagrees with what's being said, that's a healthy discussion to get to the right answer. So we do encourage Muslims to call in, Muslims who disagree, because if everybody agrees with what's being said, then we're not going to get anywhere. But it's those people that disagree that we want them to call in. We want them to prove these two people wrong. There's pretty strong claims being made from the Christian perspective. And if you can defend Islam, and if you can have a strong argument against what these two individuals are saying, then please call us, 248 416-1300, and before we take the next call, I'll hand it over to David. Yeah, yes, I, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy when Muslims call in and ask questions and uh, want to disagree with us, and that I understand why Muslims would object to what we're saying about Islam. Most Muslims have not even read the Quran all the way through, let alone the Hadith and the Sirah literature and the commentaries. So what we're saying is not common, common knowledge to Muslims. Muslims uh, don't talk about these things a lot. And so we understand that you've been raised all your life to believe that Muhammad is the greatest moral example, the example that all people should follow. And then when you hear someone saying, that Muhammad had more wives than his own revelations allowed, or that Muhammad did not treat his, uh, his wives equally, or that Muhammad allowed sex with captives, you think we must be misrepresenting Islam, but we are not, my friends. We are telling you exactly what your sources say. And any knowledgeable Muslim who has studied the sources will agree with what we're saying. Now, what we'd like to say to our, our Muslim friends is, if what we're saying bothers you, your problem is not with us. Your objection is to the life of Muhammad. And we agree with you there that there are many problems in the life of Muhammad. And with that, we will just go on to the next call. And uh, Sister Hayati, you are on the air with us. Go ahead when you're ready. You're on the air with ABN. Can you hear us? I, I, have, a, I, have, I have a comment and a question. Okay, my go ahead. Comment, my comment is that y'all are doing an awesome job. Oh, glory and to Jesus. everybody on, um, every Christian room on Pow Talk is, is broadcasting this live. Glory to Jesus. Also, okay, my question is, I asked yesterday, but I kind of didn't get an answer at the time, oh, about yes. Muhammad and his homosexual tendencies. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Also, um, does the Quran have evil spirits attached to it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's, that's my question. I appreciate your uh, question. Sometimes, because of the shortage of time, we can't get to those uh, questions. No I know problem. There are, uh, I know there are references where it says that Muhammad would rub against uh, uh, Zahir, who was a slave boy, and that he would uh, uh, suck on the tongues of his grandsons, or Ali. And those references have been understood to mean that Muhammad may have had homosexual tendencies. However, I want to stay away from passages uh, that are controversial or can be open to different interpretations because there's enough enough problems with the Quran and Islam uh, for us to bring up without having to resort to these other issues that may, may be ambiguous, not as clear, which can be interpreted in another way. So this is why I didn't really comment because those kind of texts, you and I can insist that they imply that he may have had some of those in, uh, tendencies, but a Muslim can come up with a legitimate explanation saying, no, that doesn't mean that. Just like if I kiss my child, that doesn't mean I'm inclined towards doing something okay. to that child of that nature. Now, when you talk about whether the Quran has evil spirits, we're going to get into that, Lord Jesus willing, shortly. Because you remember what my brother David said, there are three possible explanations for the revelations of, of Muhammad. One is that he just came up with it from his own human imagination, from interaction with people around, uh, uh, you know, during his time, and cultural influences, right? The second yes. is that there was a demonic source, and third, it could be from God. 